good wishes to all of you india's ancient past chapter 25 life in the gupta is system of administration in contrast of the maurya rulers the gupta kings adopted pompous titles such as parmeshwara maharaja maharaja the raja and parma bhatharaka which signify that they ruled over many lesser kings in the in their empire kingship was hereditary but uh, royal power was limited by the want of a firm adherence to primogeniture uh, the throne did not always go to the eldest son creating uncertainties of uh, it is a main point from gupta is the throne did not always go to the eldest son in gupta is creating uncertainties of which the chiefs and high officials took advantage the guptas made uh, munificent gifts to the brahmanas who expressed their gratitude by comparing the king to different gods he was looked upon as vishnu the protector and preserver the goddess lakshmi is invariably represented on gupta coins and vishnu's wives the numerical strength of the gupta army is not known evidently the king maintained a standing army which was supplemented by the forces occasionally supplied by his uh, federatories horse chariots receded into the background and uh, cavalry came to the force horse archery became an important element in military mm. tactics during the gupta period land taxes increased in number and those on trade and commerce decreased probably the king collected taxes varying from 1/4 to 1/6 of produce in addition whenever the royal army passed through the countryside the local people had to feed it the peasants had also to supply animals food grains furniture etc for the maintenance of royal officers on duty in rural areas in central and western india the villagers were also subjected to forced labor called vishti forced labor called vishti by the royal army and officials the judicial system was far more developed under the guptas than the earlier times several law books were compiled during this period and for the first time first time civil and criminal laws were clearly demarcated theft and adultery fell under criminal law disputes regarding various types of property under civil law elaborate laws were laid down about inheritance as in earlier times many laws continued to be based on varna differentiation it was the duty of the king to uphold the law and try cases with the help of brahmana priests the girls of artisans merchants and others were governed by their own laws sales from vaishali and from beta near alhabad indicate that these guilds flourished during gupta times the gupta bureaucracy was not as elaborate as that of the mauryas most important officers in gupta empire were the kumaramathyas most important officers in gupta empire were called kumaramathyas they were appointed by the king and home provinces and possibly paid in cash as the gupta were possibly vaishyas recruitment was not confined to the upper varnas only but several officers were combined in the hands of whom the same person and post became hereditary this naturally weakened royal control the gupta organized a symbol of provincial and local administration the empire was divided into divisions called bukhtis empire divided into divisions called bukhtis and each bukhti was placed under the charge of an uparika uparika uh, the buktas were divided into districts vaishyas which were placed under the charge of vaishyapati in eastern india 
the vaishyas were divided into eastern india vaishyas were divided into vithis which gain which again were subdivided into villages the village headman gained in importance in gupta times managing village affairs with the assistance of elders with the administration of a village or a small town leading local elements were associated no land transactions could be affected without their consent in the urban administration organized profes- professional bodies were given a considerable say the ceilings from vaishali shows that artisans merchants and the head of the guild served on the same corporate body and in this capacity they obviously conducted the affairs of the town the administrative board of the district of koti varsha in koti varsha in north bengal bangladesh included the chief merchant chief trader and the chief artisan their consent to land transactions was considered necessary artisans and bankers were organized into their own separate guilds we hear of numerous guilds of um, artisans traders etc at bitha and vaishali at uh, manda sor in malwa and at uh, indore silk weavers maintain their own guilds in the district of bulan shahar in western up oil preserves were organized into guilds it seems that these guilds especially those of merchants enjoyed certain immunities in any event they looked after the affairs of their own members and punished those who violated the laws and customs of the guild system of administration described above applied only to north bengal bihar uttar pradesh and some adjoining areas of madhya pradesh which were ruled directly by the officers appointed by the gupta kings major part of the empire was held by hereditary chiefs many of whom had been subjected by samudra gupta the vassals who lived on the edge of the empire had three obligations to fulfill subordinate princes they offered homage to the sovereign by personal attendance at his court paid tribute to him and presented to him doctors in marriage it seems that in turn they obtained charters to rule their areas and these marked with the royal garuda seal seems to have been issued to the vassals guptas thus collect controlled several tributary princes in mp and elsewhere second important feudal de- development that surfaced under the guptas was granted of fiscal and administrative concessions to priests and administrators started in the deccan bhai the shatvahanas the practice became a regular affair in gupta times particularly in mp religious functionaries were granted land free of tax for posterity and they were other as to collect uh, from the peasants all the taxes and that once went directly to the emperor the villages granted to the beneficiaries could not be entered by royal agents retainers and others and the beneficiaries were also empowered to punish uh, criminals whether state officials were paid by grants of land in gupta's times is uh, not clear the abundance of gold coins would suggest that a uh, higher officials continued to be paid in cash but some of them may have been remunerated by land grants as much of the imperial administration was managed by feudatories and beneficiaries the gupta rulers did not require as many officials as did the mauryas gupta rulers did not require as many officials as did the mauryas also because contrast to the Maurya state the Gupta state did not regulate economic activities on any substantial scale the participation of leading artisans merchants elders and others in the rural and urban administrations also lessened the need to maintain a large retained and retained of officers the guptas neither needed nor had the elaborate administrative machinery of Maurya tri- Maurya times
and in some ways their political system appears to have been fragile trends in trade and in and the agrarian economy we get some ideas of the economic life of the people of gupta times from fahasin who visited different parts of the gupta empire the chinese traveler informs informs us that uh, magadha was full of cities and its uh, rich people believed in and supported it with uh, charitable offerings in ancient india the guptas issued the largest number of gold coins which were called uh, dinaras in their inscriptions regular in size and weight they appear in many types and subtypes they vividly portray gupta kings indicating the later love for war and art although in gold contained the gupta coins are not as pure as the kushanas ones gold contained the gupta coins are not as pure as the kushana ones they not only serve to pay the officers officers in the army and administration but also to meet the needs of the sale and purchase of land after the conquest of gujarat the guptas issued a large number of silver coins mainly for local exchange in which silver occupied an important position under the western kshatrapas contrast to those of the kushanas the gupta copper coins are very few in number this would suggest that the use of money did not touch the common people as much as it did under the kushanas in comparison to the earlier period we notice a decline in long distance trade till around only 550 india carried on some trade with the eastern roman or byzantine empire eastern roman or byzantine empire to which it exported silk around around only 550 the people of the eastern roman empire learned from the chinese the art of growing silk which adversely affected india's export trade even before the mid 6th century the demand for indian silk brought had slackened in the mid 5th century a guild of silver silk weavers left their original home in western india in the state of latha in gujarat and migrated to mandasur in malwa where they abandoned their original occupation and adopted other professions the striking development of the gupta period especially in eastern and central mp was the emergence of emergence of priestly landlords at the cost of local peasants land grants made to the priests at tandy brought to many virgin areas under cultivation but these beneficiaries were imposed from above on local tribal peasants who were reduced to a lower status in central and western india peasants were also subjected to forced labor however a substantial amount of virgin soil was brought under cultivation and better knowledge applied to agriculture in the tribal areas of central india by the brahmana beneficiaries social developments large scale and grants to the brahmana suggest that the brahmana supremacy increased at the gupta times the guptas who probably were originally vaishyas came to be looked upon as kshatriyas by the brahmanas the brahmanas presented the gupta kings as possessing gold like attributes all these helped to legitimate the position of the gupta princes who became great supporters of the brahmanical orders the brahmanas accumulated wealth on account of the numerous land grants made and made to them and therefore climbed many privileges which are listed in the narada smriti the law book of narada a work of about the 5th century the castes pro- proliferated into numerous subcastes as a result of two factors a large number of foreigners had been assimilated into indian society and each group of foreigners was considered a king a kind of caste as the foreigners largely 
came as conquerors they were given the status of kshatriya in society the hunas who came to india towards the close of the 5th century eventually came to be recognized as one of the 36 clans of the rajputs even now some rajputs bear the title hun the other reason of for the increase in the number of castes were the absorption of many tribal people into brahmanical society through the process of land grants the tribal chiefs assigned a respectable origin but most of their or- ordinary kinsmen were assigned a low origin and every tribe became a kind of caste in its new incarnation this process continued in some ways up to the present the position of shudras improved during this period they were now permitted to listen to recitations of the ramayana the mahabharata and the puranas the epics and the puranas represented the kshatriya tradition whose myths and legends won loyalty to the social orders shudras could also worship a new god new god called krishna and were also permitted to perform certain domestic rites which naturally meant fees for the priests this can all be linked to some improvement in the economic status of the shudras from the 7th century onwards they were mainly represented as agriculturist in the early period they generally figured as servants slaves and agricultural laborers working for the three higher varnas however during this period a number of untouchables incre- increased especially the chandalas chandalas entered the society as early as the 5th century bc by the 5th century anodhomni their number had become so enormous and their disability so glaring that these attracted the attention of the chinese pilgrim fahisin he informs us that the chandalas live outside outside the village and deal in meat and flesh whenever they entered the town they strike a piece of wood this story we have here many times and please remember it was very important to understanding the concept of the society strike a piece of wood to announce their arrival so that others may avoid them in the gupta period like the shudras women were also allowed to listen to the ramayana mahabharata puranas and were advised to worship krishna however women of the higher orders did not have access to independent sources of livelihood in pre gupta and gupta times fact that women of the two lower varnas were free to earn their livelihood which gave them considerable freedom but this was denied to women of the upper varnas it was argued that the vaishyas and shudra women take to agriculture operations and domestic services and therefore outside the control of their husband in contrast by gupta times members of the higher orders came to acquire more and more land which made them more polygamous and more property minded in a patriarchal setup the began to treat women as items of property to such a degree that he woman was accepted to follow her husbands to the next world the first example of emulation of a widow after the death of her husband occurred during the gupta period in anodomni fighting however some post gupta law books held that the um, that a woman could remarry if her husband was dead destroyed impotent had become a renouncer or had been excommunicated the principal reason for the subordinating of women of the upper varnas was their complete dependence on men for their livelihood and lack of property rights however the go oldest smiths oldest smiths or law books state that gifts of jewelry ornaments garments and similar other presents made to the bride on the occasion of her marriage were considered her property gupta and post gupta law books substantially enlarged the scope of these gifts according to them presents received by the bride not only from her parents 
side parents side but also from the her parents in law at marriage and on other occasions former the stridhana kachayana a law marker of the 6th century held that a woman could sell and mortgage her immovable property along a property according to this law marker law maker but generally a doctor was not allowed to inherit a landed property in the patriarchal communities of india niyoga according to which a younger brother or kinsman could marry the wife of the elder brother after the latest death was practiced by the brahmanas and kshatriyas in vedic times but was not allowed to them by the law books of gupta and earlier times similarly uh, widow remarriages was not allowed to the members of the highest orders but the shudras could practice uh, both the niyoga or uh, liberate and widow remarriages the state of buddhism buddhism says it to receive royal patronage during the gupta period fahasan gives the impression that this religion was flourishing but in reality it was not a, not as important during the gupta period as it had been in the days of ashoka and kanishka however some stupas and viharas were constructed and nalanda became a center of buddhist education the origin and growth of bhagavatism bhagavatism originated in post maurya times and centered around the worship of vishnu or bhagavata vishnu was a minor god in vedic times he represented the sun and also the fertility cult by the second century bc he was matched with a god called narayana and came to be known as narayana vishnu originally narayana was a non vedic tribal god called bhagavata Uh, remember narayana was no uh, was a non vedic tribal god called bhagavata and his worshippers were called bhagavatas this god was conceived as a divine counterpart of a tribal chief this tribal chief received presents from his kinsmen and rest- distributed shares among them narayana also who was supposed to bestow shares or good fortune bhaga on his bhakta or worshippers in return the worshippers or bhaktas offer their loving devotion or bhakti to him the worshippers of vishnu and those of narayana were brought under a single umbrella by merging vishnu with narayana the former was a vedic god and the later emerged subsequently with non vedic associations but the two cultures the two types of peoples and the two gods mingled and merged besides vishnu came to be identified with a legendary hero of the vrishni tribe living in western india also note this point vishnu came to be identified with a legendary hero of the vishni tribe living in western india who was known as known as krishna vasudeva great epic mahabharata was recast to show that krishna and vishnu were one thus to ha- thus by 200 bc the three streams of gods and their worshippers merged into one and resulted in the creation of bhagavatism or vaishnavism bhagavatism was marked by bhakti and ahimsa bhakti means the offer of loving devotion it was a kind of loyalty offered by a tribal to his chief or by a subject to his king ahimsa or the doctrine of non killing of animals suited the agricultural society and was in keeping with the old cult of life with giving fertility associated with vishnu people worshiped the image of vishnu and offered it rice sesam sesamum etc after their aversion to killing animals some of them took to an entirely vegetarian diet the new religion was sufficiently liberal to attract foreigners it also appealed to artisans and merchants who became important under the shatvahanas and kushanas krishna taught in the bhagavad gita that even women vaishyas and shudras who were born of sin could seek refuge in him this religious text dealt with the vaishnava teachings and as did the vishnu purana 
and also to and extend the Vishnu Spriti. Bhagavadism or Vaishnavism overshadowed Mahayana Buddhism by Gupta times. Bhagavadism or Vaishnavism overshadowed Mahayana Buddhism by Gupta times. It preached the doctrine of incarnation or avatara. History was presented as a cycle of the ten incarnations of Vishnu. History was presented as a cycle of the ten incarnations of Vishnu. It was believed that whenever the social order faced a crisis, Vishnu appeared in human form to save it. Each incarnate incarnation of Vishnu was considered necessary for the salvation of dharma, which coincided with the varna divided society and the institutions of the patriarchal family protected by the state. By the sixth century, Vishnu became a member of the trinity of gods along with the Shiva and Brahma, Brahma, but was a dominant god in his own right. After the sixth century, several texts were written to popularize the virtues of worshipping him, but the most important was the Bhagavata Purana. Bhagavata Purana? The story of in the in that text was recited by priests for several days. In medieval times, Bhagavata Gharas or places meant of Vishnu worship and recitation of the legends associated with him began to be established in eastern India. Several religious recitations including the Vishnu Sahasranama were composed for the benefit of Vishnu worshippers. A few Gupta kings were worshippers of Shivas, the god of destruction, but he came to the fore at a later stage and does not seem to have been as important as Vishnu in the early phase of the Gupta rule. Idol worship in the temples became a common feature of Hinduism from the Gupta period onwards and many festivals also began to be celebrated. Agricultural festivals observed by Different classes of people were lent a religious grab and color and turned into useful sources of income for the priests. The Gupta kings followed a policy of tolerance towards different religious sects. We find no example of the persecution of the followers of Buddhism and Jainism. This was also due to the exchange in the character of Buddhism which had come to acquire many features of Brahmanism or Hinduism. Art. The Gupta period is called the Golden Age of Ancient India. This may not be true in the economic field because several towns in North India declined during this period. However, Guptas possessed a large quantity of gold, whatever its source, and they issued the largest number of gold coins. Princes and the rich could divert a part of their income to support those who were engaged in art and literature. Both Samudra Gupta and Chandra Gupta too were patrons of art and literature. Samudra Gupta is represented on his coins playing the lute veena and Chandra Gupta too is credited with maintaining in his court nine luminaries. In ancient India, art was largely inspired by religion. Survivals of non-religious art from ancient India are few. Buddhism gave great impetus to art in Maurya and post-Maurya times and led to the creation of massive stone pillars. The hewing of beautiful caves and the rising of high stupas or relic towers. The stupas appeared as dome-like structure on round bases principally of stone. Uh, we have learned so much about it on art and culture. At present, we have to focus on the this chapter. The stupas appeared as dome-like structure on round bases, principally of stone. Innumerable images of the Buddha were sculptured during the Gupta period. A life-size copper image of the Buddha of more than six feet was made. Remember this point. Gupta period during the Gupta period, life-size copper image of the Buddha of more than six feet was made. It was discovered at a Sultan Ganj near Bagalpur and is now displayed in Birmingham. During the Gupta period, beautiful images of the Buddha were fashioned at Sarnath and Mathura, but the finest 
specimens of buddhist art in gupta times are the ajanta paintings also these paintings cover the period from the 1st century bc to the 7th century anno domini most of them relate to gupta times they depict various events in the life of gautama buddha and the previous buddhas whose birth stories are related to the jatakas these paintings are life like the nat- life like and natural and the brilliance of their colors has not faded even after 14th centuries however there is nothing to show that the guptas were the patrons of the ajanta paintings as the gupta supported brahmanism images of vishnu shiva and some other hindu gods were fashion for the first time during that period at many places the entire pantheon is portrayed with the chief god at the center surrounded by his retainers and subordinates the leading god is represented as large in size with his retainers and subordinate gods drawn on a smaller scale this reflects clear social hierarchy and discrimination the gupta period was poor in terms of architecture all that we find are a few temples made of brick in up and a stone temple the bricks temples of brick temples of bitargon in kanpur bithari in kazipur and diogar in jansi me may be mentioned the buddhist university at nalanda was set up in the 5th century and its early structure made of bricks relates to this period literature gupta period is remarkable for the production of secular literature which consisted of a fair degree of ornate ochre pottery ornate court pottery basa was an important poet in the early phase of the gupta period and wrote 13 plays wrote in sanskrit he wrote in sanskrit but his dramas also contain a substantial amount of prakrit he was the author of a drama called dradira uh, sorry dradira datta which was later refashioned as mrichya katika or the little clay cart by shudraka the play deals with a uh, play deals with the love affair of a poor brahmana trader with a beautiful courtesan and is considered one of the best work of ancient drama in his plays bhasa uses the term yavanika for the curtain which uh, suggests greek uh, contact however which he has uh, however what has made the gupta period particularly famous is the work of kalidasa who lived in the second half of the 4th and the first half of the 5th century he was the greatest poet of classical sanskrit literature wrote abhijana shakuntalam which is very highly regarded in world literature relates the love story of king dushyanta and shakuntala whose son bharata appears as a famous ruler shakuntalam was one of the earliest indian works to be translated into european languages the other work being the bhagavad gita the plays produced in india during the gupta period have two common features first they are all comedies no tragedies are found secondly characters of the higher and lower classes do not speak the same language women and shudras featuring in these plays use prakrit whether the higher classes use sanskrit we may recall the ashoka and the shatavahanas used prakrit as as the state language this period also shows an increase in the production of religious literature most works of the period had a strong religious bias the two great epics namely the ramayana and the mahabharata were almost completed by the 4th century anno domini although the epics and puranas seem to have been compiled with the brahmanas they represent the kshatriya tradition they are replete with the myths legends and exaggerations they may reflect social developments but are not dependable for political history the ramayana relates the story of rama who was 
banished by his father Dasratha from the kingdom of Ayodhya for 14 years on account of um, the mechanic machination of his uh, stepmother Kaikeyi. He faithfully carried out of his father's orders and went to live in a forest from where his wife Sita was uh, abducted by Ravana, the king of Lanka. Eventually, Rama, with the help of uh, Sugriva, succeeded in rescuing Sita. The story has two important moral strands. First, it uh, idolized the inst- institutions of family in which a son must obey his father, the younger brother must obey his elder brother, and the wife must be faithful to her husband under all circumstances. Second, Ravana symbolizes the force of evil and Rama the force of um, righteousness. Uh, in the end, uh, righteousness uh, trim- trims over the forces of evil and a good order over the bad order. Story of Rama had much wider social and religious appeal than the main narrative of the Mahabharata. There are many versions of the Ramayana in all the important India languages and also in those of Southeast Asia. The Mahabharata is essentially a story of a conflict between two groups of cousins, the Kauravas and the Pandavas. It shows that a kinship knows no kinship. Although the Pandavas were entitled to their share in the kingdom ruled by Dhritarashtra, the Kauravas refused to give them even a single inch of territory. This led to a prolonged fratricidal war between the Pandavas patronized by Krishna and the Kauravas fighting on their own. Eventually, the Kauravas were worsted in the battle and the Pandavas emerged victorious. This story too symbolizes the victory of righteousness over the forces of evil. Bhagavad Gita forms an important part of the Mahabharata. It teaches that a person must carry out the duties assigned to him by his caste and rank under all circumstances without any desire for reward. The Puranas follow the lines of the epics and the early, earlier ones were finally compiled in Gupta times. They are full of myths, legends, uh, sermons, etc., which were meant for the education and uh, edification of the common people. The period also saw the compilation of various uh, smritis or the law books in which social and religious norms were written in verses. The phase of writing commentaries on the smritis begins after the Gupta period. The Gupta period also saw the development of Sanskrit grammar based on the work of Panini and Patanjali. This period is particularly memorable for the compilation of um, Amar Kosha by Amar Simha, who was a luminary in the court of Chandragupta II. This lexicon is lent by heart by students learning Sanskrit in their traditional way. Overall, the Gupta period was the bright phase in the history of classical literature and one that developed an ornate style that was different from the old simple Sanskrit. From this period onwards, we find a great emphasis on verse than on prose and also a few commentaries. Sanskrit was undoubtedly the court language of the Guptas. And although the period produced much Brahmanical religious literature, it also gave birth to some of the alleged pieces of secular literature. Um, add on to this uh, literature, uh, literature uh, part, uh, I can add some. Uh, Samudra Gupta also written some uh, books I thought find about them and note here science and technology in mathematics the period saw in the 5th century work called uh, Aryabhatiya written by Aryabhata, Aryabhata who belonged to Pataliputra it appears that this uh, mathematician was well versed in various kinds of calculations Aryabhata displays an awareness of both the zero system and the decimal system decimal system a gupta inscription of anatomy 448 from alhabad district suggests that the decimal system was known in india at the beginning of the 5th century in the field of astronomy 
A book called Romaka Siddhanta was compiled. Its title indicating that it was influenced by Greek and Roman ideas. The Gupta craftsmen distinguished themselves by their work in iron and bronze. Bronze images of the Buddha began to be produced on a considerable scale because of the knowledge the smiths had of advanced metal technology. With regard to iron objects, the best example is the iron pillar found at Mehrauli in Delhi, manufactured in the 14th sorry, 4th century anatomy. The pillar has not gathered any rust over the subsequent 15 centuries, which is a great tribute to the technological skill of the craftsman. Although the arid conditions in Delhi may also have contributed to its preservation, it was impossible to produce such a pillar in any iron foundry in the West until about a century ago. It is a pity that the later Indian craftsmen could not develop this knowledge further. At the end of the chapter chronology, BC, 5th century, the Chandalas appeared in Indian society, 200 emergence of Bhagavatism or the Krishna cult, 2nd century Krishna merged with the Narayana and came to be known as Narayana Vishnu, Anno Domini, 1st to 5th century, period of the Azanta paintings, 4th century, the iron pillar was set up at a Mahrawal in Delhi, 5th century, the date of the Narada Smriti and Adyabhata's Adyabhatiya, awareness of the zero and the decimal system. Fahasin states that the Chandalas lived outside the village and dealt in, dealt in meat and flesh. 448 A Gupta inscriptions of 448 from Alhabad district suggest the knowledge of the decimal system. Fight in the first inscriptional evidence of Sati. 550 Around this year, the people of the Eastern Roman Empire learned from the Chinese the art of growing silk which adversely affected the Indian trade. Thank you.